Hello, hello, and welcome back to Polly plus and more equals us. This is the third and final episode in our little mini series that we did on the book Sex at Dawn. Um, so yeah, I hope you've been enjoying this series as much as we have. Um, I, I just can't sing my praises enough about this book. Um, it's just so fascinating and so interesting and so insightful and so well researched. Um, but anyway, so we're going to pick up right where we left off. Um, and this is like a really, a really fun way to end this series. So I hope you enjoy. Um, okay. Another, another thing I want to touch on is also like penis size. <laughs> because it's actually really, really important and really, really fascinating. Um, I think, yeah, I think, yeah, body size, yeah, penis size, like scrotum size, all, all of that, it, yeah. all of it. Um, yeah, let's touch on that. I'm trying to find the the graph. Ah. Well, so yeah, I guess I'll start with body size because I just listened to that that portion. Okay, yeah. We'll so yeah, they, they call it like yeah, they call it body. Mm -hmm. um, I forget what the exact terminology actually, but essentially it's just like comparing the uh, the size, so the, the weight and the height of males and females within a species. Mm -hmm. And so it's fascinating because uh, gibbons who are purely monogamous, the men and the women the are only one that are purely monogamous. Yeah, are the same exact height. Same exact height. So there's no there's no physical oh, height here difference it is. at all. Oh no, this is sperm competition. Yeah, sorry, that's, that's a big table. <laughs> yeah. And then um, the other extreme is, I believe, the gorilla. Oh, the gorilla. Yeah. yeah. So, so the gorilla. We haven't talked much about the gorilla, but the gorilla's social structure is interesting. So they have, they have harems. Essentially, like men are duking it out for a group of women to sleep with all those women, and so only the winner gets to sleep with the women, and all the losers are just exiled to be yeah. alone, essentially. Yeah, so one man, multiple female partners. Yeah. Is so their structure. The gorilla, because that's been their social structure for so long, they are so physically big, right? Because what's important in their society is is physical strength, to yes. be able to like just physically fight off every mm. other gorilla. And yeah. then you become alpha through your physicality. And so... Uh, yeah, I think I think the male gorillas are about twice as tall as the female gorillas. Let's see, gorilla. Is that it? One sixty to eighty. Yeah, so double. if we're looking at weight in kilograms. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, double. Double. Yeah. So gorilla, male gorillas are double the size of female gorillas, mm -hmm. and they are polygynous, which means one man. Yeah. Many females. And then the bonobo and the human are similar, where the male is like, <laughs> mm -hmm. I think like... A little bit bigger. 20-ish percent, I think. 20 to... Say 20 percent, 20 to 30 percent larger than the female. Yeah, so like the bonobo um, in weight is almost exactly the same. 35 to 32. Mm. And then humans are 86 to 74. So they're still bigger than the females. Yeah. Yeah, I think the height difference is a little different. Well, yeah, yeah, this is weight. We're looking at weight. But, yeah, the height difference is a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, so humans and and bonobos are similar in, like, the weight and height. Mm -hmm. And so, but bonobos and humans, they label the mating system as promiscuous. <laughs> um, but it just shows, right, like, because the gorillas... They like the females become this like limited resource in a sense. Their physicality is how they how they get to mate. The bigger, badder gorilla is the one that gets to mate. Mm -hmm. But with bonobos, everybody sleeps with everybody. It doesn't matter. So being big and strong doesn't matter at all. Like yeah. for the bonobos, and that's why they are closer in in height but that's also why they are not equal in height because monogamous the gibbons are equal in height because it doesn't matter at all yeah so so yeah it all it all comes down to uh to like sperm competition right um i mean that yeah that's part of it it comes down to sperm competition 
Because if you're, yeah, if you're monogamous, you have no, there's no, like, physical competition. Yep. Well, I guess to, to obtain that one mate, there may be competition. I can't quite remember that. Eh, maybe. But essentially, but once, it's not important. once you have your mate... Like there's and no more, there's no more competition. Yeah, you're done. Yeah. You're you're never competing. You're never searching. Like yeah. you're done. Yeah. So you're you're. You have a guaranteed. Way of like, spreading your seed. Yeah. And and producing an offspring. Right? Yeah. So there's mm-hmm. no more sperm competition at that point. Yeah. Well, there is sperm competition only happens in promiscuous societies. Okay. Yeah. 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 So we're we're not quite there yet, in the sperm competition part. Okay. So, like, looking at, like, body size, body size and mass, like, that's what we've looked at. Um, and then there's also, like, penis size and length. Mm-hmm. And that also is a huge indicator of the type of um, relationship style. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a complete side effect. Of yeah. That. And so they were talking about how... Mm, I'm trying to find that other one. Um, uh, Here we go, the lengths. So they were talking about how actually, like a lot of times when we think of like, oh, evolution takes, it takes a long time. It takes many, many generations for us to see something evolve within humans. And like, that is true in some cases, but actually ball size I think it only takes like two generations to see a difference in evolution of that. Um, and so that has been really interesting. Yeah. Um, that like, so that's actually a really fast indicator to see how society is changing in such a little bit of time. Um, because not everything takes like many, many generations to see the evolution. I mean, I guess happen. like that, to me, that makes sense though, because that's like a direct, you know, that's how you, you pass on your DNA. So it's yeah. highly adaptable. Yes. It's so, like it's it's meant to be like highly like evolutionary and to adapt to your surrounding environment. Yeah, exactly. Because it is like the direct way that you pass on your DNA. Yeah, yeah. So that actually evolves very quickly. Yeah. And so when we're looking at like the different lengths in penis, it's actually really informative. So gorillas, right? They're like the big thing for them is being really big. You know, they need to be, like, big and strong, and and that's how they get all their women. But then, like, the copulation length, like, the amount of times they actually have sex and how long their sex lasts is so, so small. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I'm trying to find the... Oh, yeah. Yeah, so like for... Seconds, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so for the gorilla, who is really, really big... They basically have the smallest penis of all of the apes. And balls. And balls. Yeah. Um, and their avu- average copulation duration is like 60 seconds. Okay, it's a little bit longer. So okay. maybe like a minute. Yeah. Right? So yeah, it's a little bit longer than some of the others, as you'll see. But their penis is tiny, Tiny. They're these big giant guys with these teeny tiny penises. Because <laughs> oh yeah, what's the relative size? It's like a like a third to a quarter that of a human. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. And then yeah, their testicles are like kidney bean size, tucked up in their bodies for yeah. protection. So it's like. <laughs> yeah, and so it's like when you see a gorilla like walking around, you're like never going to see his penis or his balls. It, you're just not going to because yeah. it's so so tiny. Yeah. And it's, it's because. By the hair. Yeah, and and it's, like, kind of tucked up there. Yeah. And it's so tiny because, like, they 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 don't need, like, like, what am I trying to say? Well, because they, they don't have, like, a lot of sex, right? Because once they're the winner, then it's like, oh, I just need to, like, spread my seed a little bit and I'm done. Yeah. Boom. Well, you yeah, their they're, they're thought is purely... Like, for them to be able to re- reproduce, their fight is, like, purely physical. Yes. It has nothing to do with, like, you know, their their sperm or, like, anything reproductive. Like, that's why their bodies are so big. Yeah. Their whole, like, entire reproductive battle is fought physically. Okay. So, we also have um, 
copulations per birth. So basically, like, how many times do they have sex in their lifetime, essentially? That's kind of kind of what we look at. Gorillas, less than 20. <laughs> they have sex less than 20 times in their entire life. Whoa. Another big part of that, too. That So then why do you need a big giant penis? Oh, yeah. Another big part of that, like, <laughs> that is a whole separate story, which we'll get to later. It's, like, the whole female aspect, right? Yes. So, like, they... That is part of it, too. The the gorilla mm-hmm. has, like, known ovulation. Like, you know when you, like, when you are... Yes. ...fertile and ready to, like... Yes. ...you know, get impregnated. Yeah. So, like, for the female gorillas, you can see, like, their... Their, like, outside reproductive area, I don't know, um, like, gets red and inflamed when they are ovulating. So, also, it's like, you can physically see that they are ovulating, so you know, oh, now's the time to have sex so we can reproduce. But with humans and bonobos, it's called concealed ovulation you don't know when i'm ovulating you have no idea so if we have sex you have no clue if i'm gonna get pregnant or not because you can't tell you can't physically see anything oh unless you're on your period okay yeah but like (laughs) you know like the only exception (laughs) yeah but you can't you cannot tell when i am ovulating yeah you just can't yeah you don't know when it's like you cannot physically see when i'm ovulating for for pregnancy exactly right that's why anyone who's ever tried to get pregnant you know and is like really trying gets those like ovulation things and like tests to see when they're ovulating all that kind of stuff anyway right and so that that does play a factor in it right but like they're only having sex less than 20 times. Yeah. Because once, like, the, the alpha gorilla wins, yeah. there's no competition. It's like, okay, now I can spread my seed. I know when I need to impregnate this female gorilla. Uh-huh. And yeah. so it's just like, okay, like, how many kids do I want? Okay. Well. I guess I guess less than 20. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, it's gu- uh. it's almost, like, guaranteed for them, right? <clears throat> yeah. Because, like, they know when won. it's time. Yeah, they've yeah. won, and they know when in the female is ovulating. So it's like, okay. At that point, it's just like, it's not even, it's not a pleasure thing. It's just no. a reproduction thing. Exactly. It's just, yeah, I'm spreading. Also, also that's how, like, the big bad gorillas, because they won, they spread their big bad DNA yes. down to, like, their kids. And mm-hmm. then they all do get out. So it, it really is becoming, like, battle of the fittest. Yeah, and, like, that, like, survival of the fittest yeah. is, like, in that sense is so true. Because only the fittest, biggest, baddest gorillas get to pass on their seed. And at some point, the males get kicked out, right? Like, the male children get, like, kicked out of, like, the harem, and they have to go... I think so. ...fight for their own harem or something. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's, it's the ultimate competition. I know. Pretty scary. So happy we don't live that way. Um, <laughs> so now let's look at, like, the chimp and the bonobo, because that's also so fascinating. So, um, so gorillas have the smallest penises, Chimps, their average length in centimeters is like seven, seven and a half. Mm -hmm. Same with the bonobo, seven, seven and a half. And humans, bum ba da dum, 12 Uh centimeters or maybe 13. I don't know, or 13 and a half. 13 ish, yeah. Yeah, 13. We'll go with 13, right? Yeah. So almost, almost double the size of the bonobo and the chimp. Yeah. So what did you what did you say the other day? <laughs> I just said like, can you the cast them? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you I said something that. way worse. <laughs> we were um, oh, <laughs> we were in the shower, <laughs> and Mike had like just read this part. We were in the shower, right? So we're both naked. We're in the shower, and Mike like looks down, and he's like, "Yeah, biggest of all the apes right here," <laughs> or like. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and I was like, oh, no. I think I made it a little more graphic. <laughs> uh, but it's true, right? Um, so, and then let's look at copulation duration. So the gorillas actually do pretty good. They, they last like a whole minute. Chimps last, I don't know, like... Seconds. Ten seconds? Yeah. 
10 seconds. I mean, they may have bigger penises than Gorilla, but like, damn, 10 seconds, that's it? The Bonobos will say maybe 20? 20 yeah, seconds? Not much better. But that's like, that makes sense for their highly promiscuous nature. Oh, it says right here. Chimps, 7 seconds. Yeah. Uh, bonobos, 15 seconds. <laughs> yeah. Right? But then humans, we're at like 220 seconds or something like that. Yeah. I think they said like, yeah, four, four to seven minutes, yeah. if I remember correctly. Yeah. So like... Our duration is way longer. Yeah. Way longer. Um, but then, now let's look at how many times do we have sex? Okay. Remember yeah. gorillas? Less than 20. This is so fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's interesting. Um, chimps and bonobos? What does that mean? They combine the two. Greater than 1,000. Oh, God, I'm looking at the wrong... I was looking at the wrong thing. I was like, wait, what? Yeah, chimps and bonobos have sex more than a thousand times in their lifetime. Whoa! <laughs> right? That's a lot. They're getting down. Yeah. All the time. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're like... <laughs> but they're quick. <laughs> yeah. Seven, 15 seconds, done. All right. Yeah. Take a break. On to the next. <laughs> and now humans... Also, in our lifetime, on average, we have sex more than a thousand times. More than a thousand times. And, but that's also because, again, like we were saying, um, you know, there is no external, like, ovulation. Like, you can't see it. It's all, it's all concealed. So, like... Unless you really know, like, especially, like, for men, it's like, well, I'm just going to guess and give it a shot. I'm just going to have sex with you all the time and hope you get pregnant. Right? You don't know. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, like, so interesting, like, looking. So if we look at, like, penis size, copulation, duration, how many times we have sex on average, and then body size, we are most similar again to the bonobos. So not just in social structures, but also in physicality. Yeah. I wish they had the gibbon in there. I know. I wish they had the gibbon too, but they don't. Because the gibbon is the only monogamous one. Yeah. But I think they talk about it. They have a whole section where they talk about the gibbons. and yeah. the, it's, it's very, again, it's really low. I think they, they only have sex for reproductive purposes. And since they're only, like, one-on-one, -on -one, they just, like, have their kids and they're done. Yeah. Like, so they're probably just, like, the gorillas, less than 20. Yeah. I know it says somewhere in here, but I can't remember. Yeah, and that, that would <clears throat> fit that. Yeah, but it's a very interesting comparison. So it's, like, when you look at, when you look at our society when we first started as humans... Like, and then you look at our physicality, our structure, our DNA, all of that. It just, basically, the whole book <laughs> makes all of these really great points about, like, why, why it doesn't make sense for us to be monogamous. Or, like, how monogamy is not natural for humans. Mm -hmm. It just is not. Yeah. And then also the, uh, well, sadly and, and greedily, the human... Although the human has a, the largest penis, we do not have the uh, the largest testicles. Nope, nope, nope. That uh, that crown goes to the bonobo. Uh huh. <laughs> I think they're like <laughs> twice as large as uh, human testicles. So yeah, they're yeah they're like massive. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen a picture, but but you you've got them on length. Yeah. You know. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know we're gonna have to like Google like bonobos now and like yeah see. So, yeah, but it's interesting, too, because, yeah. you know, they, they talk about penis size, testicle size, body size, and all that, but also, like, the fact that the males, the male bonobos, chimps, and humans have an external scrotum. Yeah. It's like, what's the point of that? Like, <laughs> it's, it's highly vulnerable being, like, outside the body. Mm -hmm. Like, it just hangs there. Yeah. Like, it's not really that well protected. Yeah. It's very sensitive. Yeah. So, it's like, so, like, why why is that even, like, why did evolution go that route yeah right because the gorilla is like 
they have kidney sized testicles like tucked up there. tucked up in their body like very well protected but it's because they don't the need to it's because they don't need to produce as much sperm yeah right they're only having sex maybe 20 times in their lifetime they yeah. don't need to have like this little sperm bank yeah that's that's what balls are essentially a little sperm bank yeah. right and your sperm just chill there until it's time to like do their thing yeah so it's yeah exactly so like the external mm. scrotum it's for it's for quantity mm-hmm. of sperm but it's also for for speed like yeah. for being able to like have sex quickly yeah and frequently yeah and so like if we were monogamous that would have never developed because I, there's no mm-hmm. reason for that there's no need exactly and so it's like the only reason to have a very vulnerable you know reproductive organ mm-hmm. is for if the, you're the reproducing all the fucking and, or, time yeah, if you're having a lot of sex <laughs> and yeah yeah and, and you need yeah you know the ability to have sex frequently <laughs> yeah and because you know if 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 you're having sex with lots of different women and you don't know if they're going to get pregnant or not because you can't physically see if they're ovulating, then, yeah, you have to be able to reproduce that sperm quickly and all the time if you want your sperm to win. And that's where we get into sperm competition. (laughs) Yeah. Which is so interesting to me. So now there have been studies on, like, on sperm and and you listened to this more recently than I did so you know jump in but like basically there's like so when a man ejaculates like the beginning sperm that those like first sperm it's actually like kind of like a spermicide right it's like meant to kill yeah other sperm whoa I think that's the um I'm looking on the name the uh there's a oh, battle. Oh, the seminal fluid. A battle happening inside our yeah. vaginas, ladies. <laughs> yeah. So whereas the gorilla, their battle is all f- external and physical, yes. right? Yes. For the human and the bonobo, mm-hmm. the battle is actually not so, it's not really physical. It's all within the sperm. It's all. Yeah. It's all, it's all like. biological. Biological within the, within the body. Reproductive DNA. Yeah. Yes. So fascinating. Right? So the first like sperm that comes out is basically meant to kill any other sperm That is still in your vagina. And then the actual swimmers like come out to like go fertilize the egg. Mm -hmm. And then is there something at the end? There's, yeah, so there's actually part of, um, I guess it's part of the ejaculate. I don't know if it's a seminal fluid, but part of it actually coagulates Mm -hmm. to like trap in your swimmers and prevent other swimmers from getting in. Future men swimmers from getting in. Yeah, so it performs like it. Isn't like a little barrier. fucking bananas? <laughs> yeah. That happens? Like, whoa. Like, to me, that's so... I was like, what? I did not know that. Yeah. I did not know that. I was like, that is so... That is, like, such an intense battle plan. Yeah, I mean, it's very... Right? Yeah, it's, like, very detailed evolution, yeah. you know? Yeah, exactly. Like... You know, if we were meant to be monogamous, then why have men's sperm evolved to fight battles with other men's sperm? (laughs) That just, like, blows my fucking mind. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So, not only is there that, but then women's bodies also have the same thing. Women's bodies can also, like pick and choose in a sense which sperm are going to get through and which aren't Mm -hmm. and that's crazy so it's like your body knows that like oh the sperm of this person is going to be more compatible to make a child than the sperm of that other person so females female reproduct reproduction also has the ability to basically like deny sperm So our bodies are basically, like, so fucking smart, you know? And so, like, and they can be doing things that we don't even realize on a conscious level. Oh, yeah, they're operating on a, on, like, a biologically evolved. Yeah. Like, what's, what's best for your, your body and for your DNA level. Yes. Which is not, yeah, we're not aware of that. We're not conscious of of that. Of course, we're not (laughs) conscious of that. But that's so crazy that that is happening. Yeah. 
blows my mind. Oh, yeah. and the last part that we forgot to mention is also the suction. Yeah. <laughs> the, which is so I just cool. Of that, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Go ahead. Oh, so the uh, <laughs> apparently the, uh, the uh, a man's penis has been evolved to the shape it is, which is somewhat uh-huh. of an odd shape. Yeah. Um, purely to create a vacuum. Mm-hmm. Like and also also thrusting, like yeah. So the the shape of the penis head and like the action of thrusting during sex a- actually creates a vacuum that sucks out, like sperm that could already be there. Yes. So the thrusting motion and the shape of the head suction out other semen that yeah. could be in there. Yeah, and the only reason you would ever do that is yeah for sperm competition because other men had had sex with that woman. Yes. And a so if we were society. supposed to be monogamous, why did we evolve to suck the semen out <laughs> of a vagina? What? <laughs> Wait, but then the best part. Yeah. So then, okay. Yeah. So yeah, you may be thinking like, oh, well. So what about your semen though? Like when you ejaculate. Mm-hmm. So apparently, like during ejaculation, the head of the penis like slightly shrinks, mm-hmm. so the vacuum is no longer formed. Yeah. And so then your swimmers can go on their merry way. And they don't get sucked out. And you're not. Yeah. You're not. Holding your best swimmers back. Yeah. Not holding them back. <laughs> That's so crazy. Like, yeah. our bodies have evolved in this way, and it's so intricate and so, so cool. But, like, if we were supposed to be monogamous, and if we truly were monogamous, which we're not, but if we truly were monogamous, this never would have evolved. Yeah. Pretty, yeah. yeah, pretty much our, our bodies and... The way, like, our reproductive organs work, it's all all geared towards not being monogamous. Yeah. And so we've talked about men's bodies quite a bit. Um, and I think this is probably one of the last things we'll, we'll talk about is, okay, but what about women's bodies, right? And you haven't gotten to this part yet. No, it's all, um, it's all new to me. Yeah, you're <laughs> almost there. But basically, okay, the thing that I find... That the part that I read that I was like, oh, that makes so much sense is the oh. All right. <laughs> I'm so, on that part right now. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> so like why why do women have orgasms? And why are we so fucking loud? Right? And why multiple orgasms? Yeah, and why multiple orgasms? Right? Because we all know men are basically like one and done. But that's also because like, right, if If they're trying to, like, reproduce, they got to, like, you know, build up their sperm bank again before they can go again, right? But women, oh, my gosh, we can just keep going and going and going and going. We're like, yes, I've had one. Yes, I'll take another and another and another back to back to back to back. Yeah. If we were meant to be monogamous and only be with one person, why are we able to keep going and going and going when our male partner cannot? Boom. So much pressure. That right there. (laughs) (laughs) That right there is like one of the most obvious, right? So like that right there just shows that also women aren't meant to only be sleeping with one man. We're supposed to be sleeping with multiple. And also this was before we could like tell when we were ovulating and all that other stuff. And I mean... But it doesn't matter. It doesn't because we also know that sex is not just for reproductive pur- purposes. There is so much pleasure. So then, why do we have a little pleasure button built in? Hello, the clitoris. It's literally a little button. It's literally a pleasure <laughs> button. Yeah. It's the pleasure button. That's what I like to call it. But <laughs> like, like what? It literally has no other function. I don't think so. There is no, there is no other function for the clitoris, like that, like for our like reproduction, anything like that. It's literally just for pleasure. Yeah. You know? Remember, yeah. And a lot of, so I have gotten to the beginning of that section and a lot of yeah. research done early on, like say from like the 1600s to like the mid 1800s, like yeah. a lot of them like didn't even like, if the researcher recognized the clitoris, like it was usually like hidden. Yeah. Or, like, destroyed. Or, like, that person was, like, thrown in jail. Yeah. Like, there was, like, a lot of hiding of, like... Yeah. The function of the clitoris. Like, its existence and its function. Yeah. It's crazy. Well, because in those times, 
you weren't supposed to have sex for pleasure yeah. and you weren't supposed to be having sex like at all unless you were married and trying to have kids, right? It was shameful. So to realize that there is this little piece of the female body dedicated to pleasure and that's its entire function? Whoa, yeah. that goes against everything the church has been saying. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that it's heresy. Yeah. So anyway, we have a little little pleasure button built in. And then the last thing is also, why are we so loud? Right? Like we all know. I haven't gotten to that part. Why, like, why are you so loud? <laughs> <laughs> right? I just want the whole like, world to know. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. That is the point, right? So like women, we make all of these like moaning and pleasurable noises when we are turned on while we're having sex. Men do too, but not usually as much as women. Why? Why is that? It's because like when, okay, think about when you like, if you've ever lived in an apartment or if you've ever like been in college and Um, you know, you're living in a dorm or like an apartment or whatever, and you know your roommate or the people next door, you know when they're having sex, right? Because you can hear it. Because you can hear the female. Yeah. Why is that? And like when you hear (laughs) it, when you hear it also, you get turned on. Everybody does. It is, it is fact. You may not admit to it. It may be a small, small level of like getting turned on, but you do. Why is it that when you see or hear other people having sex, your body starts to be like, oh, oh, I want that. Yeah. I want that. That is an oh, yeah. evolutionary thing. The whole purpose is so that way other males will hear, oh shit, somebody's getting it on. Someone is ready and available. Let's go. And that's why the females are so loud. Mm. It's to let the other men know, hey, I am I am here, I am ready, let's go, right? Yeah. I got one orgasm from you, now I'm ready to have three more from three other guys. It's time, let's go, game on. It's not to let the guy know you're, who you're having sex with currently that they're doing such a great job. <laughs> <laughs> it's not to satiate their ego. <laughs> nope, sorry, mi amor. It is uh, not about your ego. It is about my own personal pleasure. And I'm like, damn, I just had one orgasm. I am ready for three more. Let's go. Who's up next to bat? And yeah, the only reason yeah. that would develop is because yeah, women and we're having sex with a lot of men, with multiple men. Yeah, and the bonobos and are exactly the same. Yeah, bonobos are exactly the same. Um. So yeah, it's just like, it's so crazy. This book gives a million more examples of just really how monogamy truly isn't natural. Yeah. Well, yeah. Know, also, or, like, another big obvious one is like, why is porn so big? Right? Like, <laughs> why is that industry like billions? Huge. Yeah, billions and billions of dollars. Yeah. Why does practically every person on the face of the earth watch porn or has watched porn yeah at some point yeah exactly it, like it just if we were monogamous like that, that that wouldn't be an industry yeah there'd be no point yeah there'd we be wouldn't, no desire we wouldn't need it yeah 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 so crazy and so there's there are like so many more examples in this book and it is so fascinating like for anyone that is curious, like this book is so, so good. I highly recommend it. It has really opened my mind up to so many things. Um, yeah, it's just fascinating. The only thing I would say is it can be kind of dense at times because there's a lot of research. Um, mm-hmm. And honestly, I feel like the first maybe quarter of the book is the densest. So, you know, if you pick it up and you start reading it and you realize, like, oh, this is a little dense, just know that it's not that way the whole way through. Yeah. Because, like, that's how I felt at first. And I was, like, I was really enjoying it, but I was also, like, reading it before bed. And I was, like, damn, this is, like, a little too dense for me to, like, get through. It's making me sort of fall asleep. Not because I wasn't entertained, but it was just, like, hard to get through at some moments. 
So, yeah. but it's just the beginning and I feel like it gets easier. It gets like less and less dense as the book goes on. Um, yeah, it's a cool and interesting combination of like a textbook slash like research paper mm-hmm. and like a, um, um, what am I thinking of? Like a, like, like irony or what's, <laughs> what's that, uh, what's that genre I'm blanking? Uh, mm, like sociology or? No, no, it's like when you're like spoofing something, when you're kind of like poking fun at something. Oh, um, like sarcasm? Yeah, but then, yeah, it's like it's like there, that there's genre. a little bit of sarcasm. Like, well, because they essentially it. just like they flip the whole like standard narrative on its head and be like, "Here's why it's so silly." And so, yeah, like, and they like poke fun at it in like really humorous ways. Yeah. So yeah, it's like. Yeah. Um, it's entertaining. Know, like a mockumentary kind of thing. I don't know. I, I can't quite think of the word right now. Thing. Yeah. But sorry, I don't know. Yeah, it's like a humorous <clears throat> textbook almost. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um. So yeah, it's. Oh, it's really, really good. Highly recommend. Um, you know, Mike is listening to it on audiobook. That might be a little bit easier, um, like listening to it to like take it in. But I don't know. I actually yeah. read it and I thought it was great. Yeah, I mean, I've had to rewind it many times to be like, oh, like you zoned what, out. What was that again? Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I zone out a little bit when I'm driving. <laughs> yeah. But also just be like, oh, like that was kind of like very densely worded like I need to hear that again like fully comprehend it kind of thing yeah exactly and that's the nice thing about like having the actual book to reference back to and be like wait can I read that sentence again what yeah (laughs) but yeah I mean overall it's just it's an amazing book and and it like debunks so many it's not even myths it debunks so many things that we have all been taught as fact Mm -hmm. because for a while it was fact but like now it's like, oh, that that isn't that just isn't true anymore, you know? Um, so that it that's yeah, it's just it's really great. hmm Yeah, I mean I would recommend it to I'd recommend it to anybody. anybody but especially and someone who is obviously curious about polyamory or open Not relationships. So yeah. Yeah. But I think it's just fascinating to like better yeah. understand where we as humans have come from. Exactly. Like, that's, I think anyone would be fascinated by that. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> All right. Is that it? Have we said I mean, everything we want to say? I think, yeah, I think the main part is I'm sure if we thought about it longer, we could come up with more. Oh, from the book, we totally there's, could. There's so much more that we haven't even talked the about. The book does a great job, but we haven't really, we're kind of like covering the main ideas and main points, but the, the book does a great job of like getting into really specific detail about particular mm-hmm. communities. Yeah. Like hunter-gatherer communities around the world, mm-hmm. like the, the Chinese community. Like they'll get really in-depth, like on an anthropological level. Yeah. Like what are their beliefs? Like how do, like how do they operate? Like what's their, their social structure? Mm-hmm. They get like really into those societies and then just kind of zo- like zoom out and like kind of see the bigger picture trends amongst all the communities and draw their conclusions from there. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's, just, it's fascinating. It's so well done. Yeah, and they like cite all their sources, and they look at like uh, like research that has been done, and then sort of like pick it apart. And it's yeah, it is just so detailed and so well written. So yeah, there's so much more we can say, <laughs> but we're I yeah. think that's good for now. Yeah. Um. Okay. Yeah. That is. Ooh, this is going to be a long episode. Well, it's definitely going to be broken up, but um, thank you for listening. Yeah. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you thought it was fascinating. And if you haven't read the book, then you definitely should. All right. Yeah, absolutely. Good to be back. Yep. Thank you guys for listening. Yep. As always. Yep. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Until next time. Ciao.